the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. For this, we go out on dark nights, searching for the dimmest stars, for signs of unseen things, to weigh us down, to stop the universe from rushing on and on into its own beyond till it exhausts itself and lies down cold, its last star going out. Whatever they turn out to be, let there be swarms of them, enough for immortality, always a star where we can warm ourselves. Let there be enough to bring it back from its own edges, to bring us all so close, we ignite the bright spark of resurrection. This week, I haven't been able to shake this poem by astronomer Rebecca Elson, entitled, Let There Always Be Light, Searching for Dark Matter. It's revealed a strange beauty guiding me toward that deeper truth and grace that comes alive in this morning's gospel from John. For me, Elson's quest to understand the unseen in this poem and in her life somehow resembles that mesmerizing hush that sweeps over the world at Christmas. We long to ground ourselves in a deeper mystery to know we are at our core connected, bound up in a larger destiny that endures. As a second law of thermodynamics sort of person, I like this hunt for the transformation of matter and energy. It feels like a mystical hide-and-seek adventure with our creator, whose grand design for the universe would have it that what is seen and what is unseen are both essential to life. And there's a lot more unseen than visible matter, as it turns out. Now, the prologue to John's Gospel that we heard this morning is also a poem, though some of the sounds and structure of that great work of beauty is lost in translation into English. Still, it's a sacred text awash in potent imagery of dark, and light, things that point us to mystical realities, both visible and invisible. For John, the glory of God reveals itself in love's energy, love's movements in our lives. From the very beginning, the eternal word spoke love's power into a rippling universe, and there was abundant light. Its goodness and grace, palpable, sometimes visible, often hidden. Today's Feast of the Incarnation invites us to marvel at the ever-unfolding mystery of divine glory. Confining itself to space and time, the Word made flesh, who came to reassure us, ever and always, that love's power is here to save. Love never has been constrained by creaturely understanding or our limits. Love is among us, whether we notice or not. John bears witness to God's undeniable presence in this world we inhabit, even when perceiving love's energy feels difficult for us. Praying with this poetry from Elson and John the Evangelist didn't exactly open up an intergalactic wormhole, but it sure did transport me back in time. Back to my first visit to Lick Observatory, where my parents took me as a young girl when I was growing up in San Jose. I can't recall glimpsing Andromeda that night, like Elson first did, gazing through a telescope at the age of 16. But I know those stars were dense and brilliant. I was energized by what the powerful telescopes magnified for our human eyes. It almost hurt to tear my gaze away from that vast experience. 
expanse of interstellar space. Visible matter makes up merely 5% of the mass of the universe, and in our ever-expanding universe, galaxies are being pushed apart as the fabric of space itself is continually stretched. Even so, there is a magical force exerted by unseen elementary particles that astrophysicists describe as dark matter. The sway of this invisible matter over everything that we can observe holds the substance of our universe in gravitational connections. Now that sounds cozy and poetic, but it's a magnificent force that ensures we don't all fly off into oblivion. It's a bit humbling and awesome to imagine. Now, this morning, you might feel a little more like scurrying over into an obscure corner of the space-time continuum and curling up for a long winter's nap. It has been a long year, and this week we just passed that longest, darkest night in the winter solstice. And even though we've rounded the corner on that dark stretch of time, our days growing longer and lighter, bringing relief, there's still a part of me, and maybe a part of you, that feels a bit spent, maybe not quite exhausted. My brother mentioned on Friday in a text message that I might want to hold off my visit this afternoon because his family has been sick all week. And I have to admit, there was this tiny little wave of relief, imagining myself going home, putting on my pajamas, and just settling in for some cozy time alone. If, like me, you find Elson's talk of stars dying out, exhausting themselves of light, hitting a little bit close to home this morning, you're not alone. In our life at St. Paul's, there is tremendous reason to look back on this year with immense gratitude for God's glory at work among us. There might also be some fatigue mixed in with relief as we continue making our way through such an intensive, extended time of transition and stretching. Exhaustion is real, and it's a legitimate state of being, if that's where you find yourself. The passionate care I have glimpsed holding this community together, and a deep concern that we continue to mobilize for the vulnerable in our world, these are manifestations of God's enduring love, lighting up our life together. We are finite beings formed of visible matter that absorbs, reflects, and emits this light of God's love. And like John admits in his own gospel this morning, we are not the source of that light. I felt some of that awareness growing in our life together. We feel responsible not to simply bask in the love that we know here, we also hope to ignite an enduring source of grace to sustain the life of the world as we follow Christ in love and service out into his creation. I believe God's hidden power is already at work, releasing untapped energy that will renew and recharge us as we seek to burn brightly in this community with the light of love. Stars are the only created forms on a journey toward death. Elson's poem rings true enough, perhaps because she herself grappled with mortality at a tender age. Her professional star was ascending as a postdoc at Princeton. She was leading her peers in the American sciences as the youngest astronomer ever elected at the age of 29 to the prestigious committee that was shaping the trajectory of her field. Elson's terminal diagnosis came in her prime. Although she survived for another decade thanks to the harsh mercy of cancer treatments, still, before the age of 40, she too went the inevitable way of stardust. As I think about the wisdom Elson's words hold for us as a faith community that has known the breath
bright blaze of love, enlivening us to reach out in a world where the depth of human need can sometimes seem invisible. I find myself contemplating our present opportunity to bear witness to the resurrection power of Jesus Christ at work in the universe. That light will never burn out. We are people drawn into this light, but we also are not immune to exhaustion. We pay close attention and tend with great care this precious love God has entrusted to us here. Our understandable habits of focusing primarily on what is visible among us sometimes blind us to the mystery of love recreating our world. Though we perceive only 5% of what exists in the universe, we employ creative strategies to measure and map it. Human tendencies toward control and containment run so deep. Yet God's work endures from generation to generation. Its movements remain unseen and unconfined. It energizes the universe in incomprehensible ways. At St. Paul's, I'm grateful for all who tend the spark of love in this community with faithful prayers and generous presence. I am grateful for you here this morning. And even as we keep paying attention to all who show up in our doors, I also notice myself awakening to questions about who and what remains invisible in our life together. Not fixated on the numbers of a given ministry gathering or activity so much as becoming mindful of all we cannot yet see, the power, the prayer, presence at work in this place in ways that transcend our focus on visible matters. I believe God's hidden work among us is dynamic. It is patient. It is potent. At least as mysterious as dark matter in the universe, it draws us back from the edges of human existence, moving as we do at an ever-accelerating pace in society, further and further apart from one another. This hidden work of God brings us back into connection. Connection here in this communal center where God renews us, grounding us in the inexhaustible source of grace that will never die. This sway of love's unseen power affects us every day. From the mystical pull we feel toward the loving presence of our dear ones who have died, to the healing energy of prayer, transforming human bodies in miraculous ways. These seem so simple that we sometimes take them for granted. But at Christmas, love draws us back with that mystical gravity that holds our universe together where we can be still in awe and wonder as we contemplate all that remains hidden. Attuning our eyes to God's unseen movements might feel a little bit like searching for darker matter, but I believe we have only glimpsed a mere fraction of the resurrection power that God is revealing within the body of Christ. Awakening to the invisible work of God among us will take time and patience. It will ask us to risk transformation. Like stars, we too live and we die. Life's urgency does not escape us. Seen or unseen by others, the blaze of beauty we manifest and leave behind in the lives we lead and the loves we share such precious gifts are significant to God. And when we offer ourselves in love, our immortal, invisible creator renews our light in the undying energy of Christ's mystical body, where resurrection power is alive in ways both visible and unseen. Elson's quest is not unlike our own this Christmas morning. We are people drawn to the warmth of love, who want to touch it, whether we strain toward 
Starlight opens space for the mystery of dark matter, binding the visible, the visible particles of our universe together. Revealed and hidden, God's glory dances across the Milky Way. It graces St. Paul's tomb. For God's light holds out the promise of a yet untapped wellspring of light, abundant and available to sustain our life together. We are not bound or burnt out like exhausted stars. Rather, as people who know the transforming power of resurrection, we are set free to bear witness to an undying love that enfolds us all, connecting us within the mystical heart of the universe, where the word of love waits to give us new birth through God's eternal truth. I wonder what bright spark of resurrection you perceive God orchestrating in this little corner of the universe. May the grace of the eternal word, whose enduring love laid the foundations for all that is seen and 